This video is on the antidromic snare technique and a step-by-step -step, uh, approach. Uh, so the typical situation is illustrated here where you have an acute angulation and no matter what we did uh, trying the different vein selectors we couldn't get a wire to advance uh, beyond the acute bend. So we decided to go ahead with the antidromic snare technique and this is a list of the catheters and wires uh, that might be necessary uh, to do the procedure. The first step is to engage the branch with collaterals to the target vein. In this case, it's the MCV. The 9 French internal diameter Worley sheath provides options to use the support wire technique to easily engage the MCV. The support wire technique is really not an option with a 7 French CS access catheter. So the first step is to advance a vertebral shaped vein selector over an angled 035 glide wire deep into the coronary sinus. Keeping the vertebral vein selector deep in the, in the CS, the glide wire is removed and an 035 <clears throat> 180 centimeter J-tip Cook Amplatz wire uh, is advanced. The, the, it's important to use the Cook and not other brands because the Cook has a short taper so that it's stiff right after the J. You want to secure the amplat so that it doesn't slide out of the coronary sinus while you're working and here we have it clipped to the drape. Once the, you have this done then you take the vertebral vein selector back into the CS this time it's beside the amplat's wire. Holding the vein selector and amplat support wire in place, the Worley sheath is drawn into the right atrium. Holding the amplat's wire and the sheath together, the tip of the vein selector is directed towards the lateral wall and withdrawn towards the MCV. The shape of the vertebral vein selector is well suited for cannulation of the MCV, as well as target veins below Vucin's valve. A puff of contrast uh, confirms that from the injection system confirms that the tip of the vein selector has dropped into the MCV. At this point, we're going to advance an angled 035 glide wire, or you could use an 014 inch angioplasty wire. We're going to put that into the MCV and then follow that uh, with a with the uh, we're going to follow the vein selector over the, over the wire into the MCV, all the while the, the uh, sheath is supported by the Amplatz wire. Once the, glide, once the vertebral vein selector is in the middle cardiac vein, we'll puff a contrast to try to define collaterals from the MCV up to our target vein. So here we have to review the 180 centimeter support wire, the 9 French sheath, the 5 French vein selector, which was advanced in this case over the hydrophilic wire. We inject contrast, full strength, and you can start to see the collaterals. Uh, the first collateral that we see uh, didn't seem to go very well to the uh, target vein, so uh, we injected, we pulled the, the vein selector back to this next branch and injected into that to look for collaterals. And you can see how nicely the, uh, the vertebral vein selector fits into the collaterals. Once we got to that point and we saw that they had a reasonable chance of getting through the collaterals, we took a 300 centimeter light support floppy polymer jacket angioplasty wire into the collaterals. And the choice of wires is really critically important. So we had the wire, but we, and we injected contrast. We could see that it really didn't go uh, to the target vein. So we had to withdraw the wire and then re-advance it. And this time uh, we were able to get the wire through the collaterals and back into the CS. So once again reviewing, we have the angioplasty wire here, the Amplat support wire here, and the vein selector. And now it's time uh, to put the snare catheter in. So we don't want to put the snare catheter uh, in, in the assembled fashion, that is putting the loop and the snare catheter together. We want to put the uh, snare catheter over the existing, wi the existing wire uh, that's already in the CS because otherwise you would have trouble getting the snare into the CS. 
So we're advancing the snare catheter over the 180 centimeter Amplatz wire into the CS. And now you can see the tip of the Amplatz wire here. And then once the snare catheter is in the mid CS, the Amplatz wire is removed and our snare catheter is inserted into the hub and out into the coronary sinus. So we'll rotate the, the snare to get it into good position, then withdraw the wire uh, back towards the os of the target vein, and then it, advance it into the uh, open snare. So there it goes into the open snare. And so we have eight centimeters of wire through the open snare. We have our nine French sheath here. Here's the tip of the snare catheter and the vein selector is still in the middle cardiac vein. So holding the snare catheter in position, the loop of the snare is withdrawn against the angioplasty wire. And you know you have the wire because the snare catheter doesn't come back any further, the snare loop doesn't come back any further. Now we need to snare the, or secure the uh, snared wire. And to do that, uh, with the right hand, we hold the hemostat, left hand, um, we pull hard on the loop and close the, once you have it nice and tight and you see some uh, crinkling here of the snare catheter, then you close the tip of the hemostat uh, on the snare to keep it nice and tight. That's illustrated here. Okay, now the goal is to use the snare to withdraw 120 centimeters of the angioplasty wire into the sheath and out up into the pocket so that we have enough uh, wire in the pocket to put the lead down. So now pulling that much wire or advancing that much wire through the collaterals has the potential uh, for the cheese cutter effect. So we need to uh, cover the wire with this micro pan puncture or this micro catheter. So to prevent the cheese cutter effect, the wire is covered with a micro catheter. The wire is then advanced through the micro catheter and not pulled through the collaterals. So this is the, this is the micro catheter that we use. <clears throat> has an 014 inch lumen and a 1.54 French tip. So we're going to remove the vein selector. And now here's the micro catheter coming back where the vein selector was. We have the wire snared up at the top there. And we're advancing uh, the micro catheter through the collaterals and we're putting tension on the wire here to allow us to advance the micro catheter uh, through the collaterals and then back out into the CS. Next step is very important, and that's to keep the wire moving freely, the microcatheter must be flushed with saline. And to do that, we have a Y adapter, a 1 to 2 cc syringe with saline, a hemostatic valve that we close nice and tight, and here's the wire, angioplasty wire coming out attached to the hub of the microcatheter. Failure to flush the microcatheter can result in seizure of the wire within the uh, microcatheter. So here we are. The next step is to advance the distal end of the wire into the microcatheter while the tip of the wire is withdrawn into the 9 French sheath with a swear, snare. So we're not pulling the wire into, this, into the sheath. We're taking up the slack that's been created by advancing the wire into the microcatheter. So one person's advancing the wire and the other's uh, taking up the slack. So what this looks like on the other end uh, is illustrated here. You can see this, my, my technician here is advancing the wire into the microcatheter uh, and I'm taking up the slack uh, with the snare. So the, and you want continuous process of advancing the wire and withdrawing the snared end is continued until you have 80 centimeters externalized in the pocket. And the sheath is 40, so it's a total of 120 centimeters of wire has to go through the collaterals. If there is difficulty advancing the wire into the microcatheter, you want to stop, close the hemostatic valve here, and flush the microcatheter with your uh, syringe and saline. So once you have uh, the snared wire up on the table, and we have enough slack in the wire, we'll, we'll open the snare and remove the snared loop, uh, the snared wire from the loop of the snare, and then here, you can see the bent portion of the wire uh, because of the snare, and then we'll take a pair of scissors 
and we'll trim off the vent section. And then the cut end of the wire is back loaded into the tip of the pacing lead. So when you think about this, we're actually putting the pacing lead backwards down the angioplasty wire, which is why we call it antidromic. So the proximal end of the wire uh, is secured at the hub of the Y adapter, um, the same Y adapter that we use to actually flush the catheter. So you can see that the, the, we have the hemostatic the hemostat there, which prevents the angioplasty wire from advancing while we're putting tension on it. And so my assistant has is holding tension on the wire back here. You can see there she has tension on the wire and I'm advancing the lead uh, over the wire. And back in here, this is the other end of the wire which is being held in place by the microcatheter uh, with, with a snap. Now, uh, as we try to advance the lead here, you, you can see that it's not going easily. Um, and so sometimes you have to let a little slack out. So this had such an acute angle on it and we had, we had pulled this down. So we let some of the slack out, uh, let the lead pop up and then applied tension again. And now we're able to advance the pacing lead into the target vein. And you can see here's the microcatheter here. The microcatheter, of course, has to be pulled back to allow the lead to advance. This is a funny case where um, the other situation where you can have advanced difficulty advancing the lead is when you forgot to bring the microcatheter back into the, uh, into the collaterals. And so here's the tip of the microcatheter. And at first I couldn't figure out why the lead wasn't advancing and then I saw that the microcatheter was in the way. So we had to withdraw the microcatheter uh, back into the uh, collateral so that the lead could advance. So there we have the lead in place. So once the lead's in place and thresholds are confirmed, we peel away the sheath. You can see the sheath's been removed here. We have the microcatheter here, and we're going to withdraw the wire uh, into the microcatheter uh, and out of the lead. So you'll see here the, the tip of the wire just came out of the mic uh, the, the uh, wire just came out of the tip of the lead and into the microcatheter. And then once the thresholds are checked, uh, we can remove uh, the microcatheter and everything's out. So if in the process there is any difficulty moving the wire, it's important to close the hemostatic valve uh, and flush the microcatheter. In addition, if you're having trouble moving the wire, you can flush the lead uh, by taking your flushing tool, attaching it to the pacing lead, uh, and then attaching that uh, to a Y adapter, closing the hemostatic valve, and then flushing. So you can actually flush the lead with the wire in place, and that may be helpful even in other circumstances. In some patients, the vertebral vein selector is not the correct shape to engage the collaterals to the target vein. So in this case, uh, the, the collateral that's very large and easy to see, its takeoff didn't engage well uh, with the vein selector. So if you have that happen, you can just exchange the vertebral shape uh, for another shape vein selector to engage the collateral uh, for the antidromic snare technique. Although the collaterals leading to the target vein are often found in the MCV, they may be found connecting to other adjacent veins. So an example is illustrated here. In this case, the MCV was difficult to locate using the vertebral vein selector. Uh, so I switched to the standard vein selector uh, and aimed at lateral and was dragging it back along the wall of the coronary sinus um, and found this side branch, which was not apparent on the venogram. And injecting contrast there, you can see that we have a collateral uh, that goes to the stenotic target vein through and we're able to advance uh, back out into the coronary sinus and then snare it and place the lead. Another example here, you can see this acute tortuosity here. Uh, we weren't able to advance the lead antegrade, so uh, we went up high into this anterolateral branch um, and we saw this beautiful collateral here. So we were able to uh, advance the wire from this anterolateral branch around and out into the coronary sinus, uh, snared the wire there, 
and then we're able to advance the pacing lead through this tortuous area here um, using the antidromic snare technique. The other situation that can, can occur is if the microcatheter will not advance through the collaterals, which is, I haven't really seen that using the 014 inch Surecross. This was days when I was using an 018 diameter uh, microcatheter. You can exchange the microcatheter uh, for 1.25 millimeter over the wire cornering balloon, not rapid exchange, but over the wire. And then you can advance your cornering balloon uh, through, the, through the circulation. And if you get run into trouble, you can dilate the spot. And then once you're there, uh, you use the lumen of your over the wire cornering balloon as your microcatheter. Another situation that can occur um, is illustrated here. Usually, uh, you put you put the microcatheter uh, through the collaterals once you have it have the wire snared. In this case, um, we were able to get the wire through the collaterals and into the target vein, but just couldn't get the wire to come out of the target vein. The wire got bent, so uh, we were able to advance. We're able to actually advance the microcatheter through the collaterals and get that through the collaterals and back up into the coronary sinus even before the wire was snared. And we now have this microcatheter uh, here where we can, that provides support for advancing the lead uh, and also uh, would allow us to change the wire if we so choose without having to worry about losing, the, losing um, our wire through the collaterals. So here you can see we're now uh, advancing the wire through the collaterals, uh, closing the wire on the snare, and then advancing the pacing lead uh, using the antidromic snare technique. So that's the antidromic snare technique step by step. I think we've covered all the potential variations on the theme, and I hope this is helpful for you. Thank you.